A while back, I was talking to someone about this and that. Video games come up, as, as they do. And I mentioned, you know, I think there's going to be very soon a new government campaign against video games. But this time it's going to be different. It's not going to be directed at the games or the companies. It's going to be directed primarily at Discord. Because at the time, I'd a lot of the, the channels, the things I listened to and read, uh, you'd been seeing Discord come up a lot uh, with relation to these elite media types, and it was always mentioned in these very sort of sinister and ominous tones, like we don't know what's going on there, like it's this dark alley where anything's going on. So I said, you know, there's going to be a campaign against Discord. It's going to be an ancillary campaign. It's going to be a side story. It's not going to be the main focus, but it will be a target. Now, what I didn't realize at the time was I was actually behind the curve because apparently the United States Federal Bureau of Investigation has been looking into, among others, Discord since at least January of 2021. Let me say up front that I don't like talking about politics. I used to. 20 years ago I did, even 10 years ago. But I'm, I'm past it, or rather I'm fed up with it. Uh, I, at this point I feel like anything else I talk about or write about is more productive than talking or writing about politics. I'm making an exception here. As far as I can tell, this particular story is one that hasn't really caught on with the usual suspects, the essay writers and YouTube and such places, who most of the time don't know what the hell they're talking about. And I figure it'll happen, maybe next week, and I would like to, in my own tiny, tiny little way, get out ahead of that and try to explain some of the nuances behind this and what I think is going on, because I can already sense many, many misapprehensions being reported as fact from people who don't read articles but only read headlines and synopses. So this is an article in The Intercept. Not my favorite source, but it's the one we're going with. And the headline is, The Feds Are Coming for Extremist Gamers. Now, let me say, this headline is so sensationalistic. Uh, unfortunately, this is just how it goes these days. We just, if you're not familiar with kind of the ins and outs of writing and writers, we have surrendered unconditionally to clickbait. We've just given up. We're, we're not fighting it anymore. We're not trying to move around it. Instead, we've convinced ourselves that we can do this ethically, quote unquote. And the result of that is that all of us are now just trying to stay a few paces behind the content farm creators as they lead us down a path into the mouth of hell. The best I can say about this headline is that it's not 100% false. What's actually going on here is a little bit more complicated, but frankly is still really kind of disturbing, but we're going to need to go over what exactly this is. So this starts with a GAO report from January. It is titled, Countering Violent Extremism. FBI and DHS need strategies and goals for sharing threat information with social media and gaming companies. So it is, it's the FBI and Homeland Security, the Department of Homeland Security, but they don't get mentioned quite as much. I'm going to put links to both the Intercept article and the GAO report. I did read through both for this. I don't know that I actually recommend reading the GAO report, at least not in its entirety, because it's a lot of stuff about procedure and protocol. There's a huge chunk in the middle where all they do is give their definitions of domestic terrorism and different categories and how they communicate. And it's really only vaguely relevant to what we're going to be talking about here. I'll show you kind of the key parts. The Intercept article isn't bad. Once you get past the headline, it's not awful. So I would recommend reading that, but I will have links to both below. I'm just going to read directly from the GAO report for a little bit. Domestic violent extremists have used online platforms to recruit followers, plan and rally support for in-person activities, and disseminate materials that contribute to radicalization and mobilization to violence, among other purposes. In June 2023, the Federal Bureau of Investigation and Department of Homeland Security identified lone offenders and small groups of individuals, both of whom are often radicalized online, who commit acts of violence that are motivated by a mix of ideological, 
sociopolitical, and personal grievances as one of the most significant terrorism threats. In January 2022, Department of Justice officials testified at a congressional hearing that investigations of suspected domestic violent extremists more than doubled since the spring of 2020. Social media and gaming platforms are ever-present in the lives of many Americans. In 2021, about 72 percent... I'll skip by this, it's just some basic stats. While social media and gaming platforms are integral to modern life, content shared on those platforms has also influenced mass attacks by violent extremists. The U.S. Secret Service found that 23% of mass attack perpetrators from 2016 through 2020 posted concerning communications online, such as threats to harm others and referencing previous mass shootings or hate toward a particular ethnic group. In addition, a 2022 report by the Anti-Defamation League found that 20% of adult gamers and 15% of young gamers reported being exposed to white supremacist ideologies in online games. In case you're curious about that last bit, because I was this ADL report, which is called Hate is No Game, Hate and Harassment in Online Games 2022, I read this as well. I also read a few of the studies they linked to, which the, the ones I read had a real aroma of p-hacking to them. I'm not really qualified to make that call, but it, they were a little bit, a little bit suspicious. Felt like they may have been gamed a little bit. But here's the key point, which is the major takeaway. Clearly, the ADL wanted this to be their major takeaway. They asked people if they had, and I'm going to use their exact language here. We asked if they were exposed to people who, quote, believe that white people are superior to people of other races and that white people should be in charge. So exposure to white supremacist ideologies, it could just be slurs. They're kind of nonspecific about this, at least in that part. I'll go ahead and link to that as well, just, so, just, to, just to keep me honest, just so you can see that I'm not taking things out of context or omitting key information. We'll now go back to the GAO report, and we'll skip ahead a little bit here. This is page three. To further describe how social media and gaming companies mitigate online content that promotes domestic violence extremism, we reviewed information and interviewed officials from a non-generalizable sample of companies that operate social media and gaming platforms. To identify which companies to include, we reviewed articles and reports from academic literature, non-governmental organizations, and the media published from January 2021 through January 2023 describing content promoting domestic violence extremism on the internet. To identify articles and reports to view, we conducted searches using terms related to domestic violence extremism, such as domestic violence extremism, domestic terrorism, or mass shooting, as well as terms related to online platforms such as social media, forum, and gaming. We then counted the number of times various social media and gaming platforms were mentioned in the articles and reports. We selected the 10 companies whose platforms were cited the most. I love this methodology because it's the kind of thing that I would do, and that is not a backpack. I do things like this because I have limited resources and am working in subfields where there really are no strong authoritative sources. This is a government organization. It really feels like they should be able to do better than I can by myself. Skipping ahead a bit more, they ultimately landed on five companies. Uh, those five companies are Discord, as mentioned, Reddit, which isn't really video game related, but whatever, they're counting it. Uh, then was Roblox, and then two companies they did not identify. They only We only know that one of them is a video game publisher. You can kind of make an educated guess that it's probably a company that operates at least one large online game. So there's a couple sort of safe bets. I'd say Epic, Riot, ABK, Rockstar all pretty, pretty safe bets. It's probably one of them. It's at this point that things get a little hazy. People who watch these things have already suspected that the FBI and the DHS were doing this. We just didn't know the extent. And after this report, we still really don't know. Um, if you go to the Intercept article, they contacted uh, all of the companies that they could identify and none of them responded, so as of right now, we really don't know what the FBI has done, what they are currently doing, or what their plans are. And in fact, that comes up. You see, if you keep scrolling down and reading through the GAO report, eventually, 
This is on page uh, 27, pretty close to the end. We get the subhead, the FBI and DHS have not developed goals or strategies for sharing information about domestic violence extremists with social media and gaming companies. Here's a key bit from that section. We found that the FBI and DHS have not developed goals or overarching strategies for information sharing mechanisms with social media and gaming companies about domestic violent extremism. Specifically, neither agency has developed a strategy that articulates how it identifies and selects companies to engage with or the goals and desired outcomes of its engagement with social media and gaming companies. While officials reported that the FBI has goals associated with mitigation of international and domestic terrorism threats, officials know that these goals are agnostic of the platforms used. FBI officials stated that they incorporate the use of social media and gaming platforms in investigation or addressing tips related to domestic violent extremist threats online, but there are no goals specifically associated with these topics. While the FBI generally seeks to build and maintain relationships with social media and gaming companies to better facilitate legal processes from field investigations and provide mechanisms for reporting federal crimes and threats of, to life to the FBI, it has not developed specific goals or strategies to determine how its efforts help to achieve those goals. According to the FBI, the agents, agency has had informal planning discussions internally as it works towards solidifying specific goals and strategies. That's, let's say, less than ideal, because the FBI, if you know about their history, the FBI, when they have been directionless, when they've had this kind of top-level goal, but no real strategy under it, have tended to do some really bad things. Uh, one thing you will realize looking at the history of this body is that if the FBI want to find a bad guy, they will find a bad guy, even if they have to create one themselves. Again, there's a lot that's unclear at the moment. We really don't know these companies. We don't even know all the companies that are doing this. Uh, we don't know to what extent they have worked with the FBI, uh, what information they might have turned over. Again, reading through this report, so much of this thing is just defining potential threats and then talking about protocol and procedures, there's really not that much about what FBI or DHS are doing at the moment, which is obviously a little bit troubling if you are concerned about what those organizations are capable of. But I want to loop back to what I said at the beginning uh, when I was talking about this to acquaintances and people online, and I said, you know, Discord's going to be a target, but it's going to be a side target. It's going to be a sideshow. The main show is something that we're all very familiar with. All of you, I assume, even if you don't follow the news closely, are familiar with the fact that the United States Congress, that the United States federal government, is currently engaged in a campaign to ban an app. They are trying to ban TikTok from the entire country. Something which, by the way, is blatantly unconstitutional. I don't even know why they're trying it. Uh, there's virtually no opposition to this. It seems, unfortunately, like this is going to go through. And with this Supreme Court, I really don't trust them to do the right thing here. Now, the government, including the federal government and many state governments, and also most of the media... Uh, mainstream media, partisan media, whatever you care to look at, most of them have tried to describe this campaign, this kind of anti-internet campaign, is just focused on these specific platforms and focused on protecting the kids. The seven most dangerous words in Washington, D.C. are, will somebody please think of the children? This is a phrase, variants on this phrase, uttered right before they pass really awful legislation. They are thought-stopping words. You mention the children, protecting the children, and you're supposed to stop considering the consequences of what they're doing and just agree. And that is how everywhere at the federal level in many states have been presenting this. But that is not what this is about. And what this is really about, on a broader level, is user-generated content. And this is not a new campaign. We're all pretending that this is some new thing. This is about Facebook. This is about TikTok. It is not. This is a project that has been ongoing for at least two decades. 
back during the days when blogs were the big new thing and blogs were the big scary thing. And there were people at the time, uh, many pundits, many people high up in the press and even in the government, who felt that anonymous bloggers were a threat to the republic. There were these awful, awful op-eds back in the day from people saying there should be laws that make it illegal to operate a blog anonymously, illegal to write on the internet under a pseudonym, and that you should have to register with the government if you want to have a blog like you're a lobbyist. Back then, it was absurd because really, outside of these narrow little media bubbles, nobody really cared about blogs that much. But over the last five to ten years, there has been a lot more success in introducing these ideas suggesting that certain internet services are particularly threatening, and from there, that all of the internet is threatening, that it needs to be controlled, that it needs to be regulated to death. It is unfortunately bipartisan. Everyone applauds for this. This is one case where I really, really don't. Unfortunately, both Republicans and Democrats agree that the internet needs to be destroyed. They just can't agree on the mode of execution. Are we going to open this thing up to litigation so that every website with user-generated content is sued into oblivion and they remove it? Or are we going to make it so that the platforms with user-generated content can't stop bad actors and so they get flooded with spammers and bots and just horrible people in general? You know, firing squad, electric chair, either way the result's the same. This is why I feel that this new anti-video game campaign is really just going to be a secondary theater in a much broader campaign. Most video games don't have a lot of user-generated content, so they're not scary to these people. They may be scary for different reasons, but it's always worth noting that the old, like, 90s and early 2000s fear-mongering about video games causing violence, that's pretty much over. The only time you hear that anymore is when some right-wing talking head is trying to talk about anything but gun violence. They bring this up and it fizzles. Nobody buys it anymore. The new threat again, is not the games themselves. It is what the users are doing inside those games, including just communication back and forth. That's why Discord got pulled into there. That's why Reddit is on here, and Reddit's probably going to be a bigger target in the future. And unfortunately, this is going to grow. The fact that this ridiculous proposed TikTok ban, which I'm just going to repeat, blatantly blatantly unconstitutional. The fact that it is getting so much steam from the Congress and from the president suggests that this is going to keep growing. And granted, in this case, you also have elements of it being part of this third red scare, or we're not even going to talk about anti-China sentiment in the United States as much as I'd like to. But this is a very, very aggressive play, far more than we've seen from the states, and it's already ridiculous that the states are trying to regulate the internet. So no, this isn't some campaign to target gamers or anything like that. It is still a huge problem, and if the FBI is involved, and if they are as directionless as the GAO report seems to suggest, then yeah, they probably are going to ruin some lives before this is through. In terms of whether this gets broader notice, in terms of whether this gets pulled into sort of the mass discourse the same way that complaints about like Instagram and Twitter and TikTok have. It's kind of hard to say. The best advice I can give you is to really follow news, especially sort of tech and information policy news over the next year or two, because I have a feeling things are going to get deeply unpleasant uh, over the next, probably the next few months, even the next few weeks. And the last thing you want is to be caught off guard.